Um, okay, we'll take a look at this. Why did David Ferry go to an ice skating rink? Well, he, he didn't go there, number one. He was hiding out in Hammond, Louisiana with a guy named Thomas Compton. Um, but why was the Winterland even brought into it? This is where these guys screwed up. See, thank God for the internet. Thank God for the internet these days because some of the information I got didn't even come wasn't even available till November 2018. The one piece of information I had that cracked the entire case for me did not even exist until November 2018. So I really can't hold this against some of the old school researchers, you know, even though they are shills for the CIA. So looking at this piece of paper, it outlines some of the phone calls that were made, some of the places that he went. So it says that he met he went and he met with a guy named Chuck Rowland. Well, the first clue for me was Roland's first name was allegedly Roland. Roland, Chuck Roland. I'm like, dude, nobody's named Roland Roland. It just doesn't happen. So I knew something was fishy there. And so I began to dig. And I came across forums that were around since 2016 with people who actually had experiences at the Winterland, who had been ice skating there, had been training there, had done all kinds of other things at the Winterland. And so the Winterland... Actually, let me see if I can find it in here. I'll come back to it. Um, this is the Winterland right here. This is the Winterland Ice. It's called the Winterland Ice Arena. Um, it was really kind of a rundown, dumpy little ice rink. And it was run by two people, Mary Boots Roberts and Ronnie Roberts. Now, when you look at the paperwork or what people said who the owner was, it, it, it kind of changed. But the reality is that Mary Booth Roberts and Ronnie Roberts, they work for the CIA. Duh. And the building itself was actually owned by the Johnson Family Enterprise. Lyndon Baines Johnson's family business owned the Winterland Ice Rink. And that's not even the kicker yet. We haven't even gotten to the kicker. So, um, Roland Roland is not his guy's name. His name is Roulant Chuck Roland. He was French Canadian. Um, and the, 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 why the CIA or the FBI or the Warren commission or anybody who interviewed him in an official in, in, in capacity, why they just allowed him to give a fake name beats the hell out of me. You think they didn't investigate these guys? Sure. They did. They had paperwork on them. And who's who, especially if you're coming in from out of the country, they had your, your they had your documents why they allowed the myth of his name being Roland Chuck Roland to exist, uh, I have no idea. Um, some of these pictures that you're seeing, no one's ever seen before. Um, I'll tell a story. I got into a private group that had about 80 people in it, and it was called uh, Winterland Memories. And the group had only popped up in 2017. And it's very, really, there's no posts, really not a lot of posts popping up. In the beginning, it was very busy, not busy anymore. I've got over 100 photos and flyers and things with people's real names on them and rosters of who was on certain te certain you know hockey teams and all of the names connect to intelligence it's really crazy because the people in this group they're just talking about their memories from being a kid none of them are like conspiracy people i have never posted in the group i promise i never would so let's go take a look at mary boots roberts white so mary boots roberts white also known as mary boots roberts white called to garon called to garon is her birth name her parents are Joe and Corrine Caltagrone, brother called Joe Caltagrone Jr. But she has a cousin. The cousin's name is Vincent Caltagrone Jr. Take a look at this guy's face. Tell me if he looks familiar to you. This is Vincent Caltagrone Jr. He has two kids. Um, one of them name is Jack, and the other one's name is Tom Caltagrone. And his Tom has a wife named Lou Caltagrone. And so when you start Google searching shit and, you know, I feel bad for investigators in the sixties who didn't have Google, even though I hate Google, the idea we can look up anything in the universe is pretty freaking amazing. Cross-referencing this thing has been quite uh, a, a journey. Um, but uh, anyway, um, so he has a kid named Tom Caltagarone, married to Lou Caltagarone, but who was the mother and how was the mother relevant in any way, shape or form? Well, it turns out that the mother of his child was Lorraine Valenti Dinerstein. Um, she is the sister of Jack Valente. Jack Valente, and we will get to him. I'm pretty surprised I made it this far and not, didn't, didn't spill the beans on him yet. But uh, Jack Valente is the most important person in the assassination period. 
hands down, smokes everybody else's role. He was, you might as well have called it the Jack Valenti show. He sent the letter to uh, Kennedy to get him to come to Texas. He hosted all the events that were happening in Texas. He says he was in the motorcade, but we'll get to that here in a moment. Um, so you have Jack Valenti's sister is married to Vincent Caltagaron, right? And uh, Vincent Caltagaron, his cousin, is Mary Boots Roberts, who is basically the first lease of the Winterland Ice Rink. And it was the Johnson family enterprise that built the rink for her. Well, she was the inspiration, so to speak. I guess they were friends because they were their intelligence, obviously. Um, the LBJ connections to intelligence run deep. They do run through Texas, uh, though, which puts a weird spin on things. Um, there's a there's a weird vibe going on in Texas in the 50s and 60s. Really, it's 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 crazy. Um, so you got Vincent called to Garon, and you guys have seen him before, and you'll figure out where in a minute. But um, the connection to Jack Valente is now absolutely it's undisputable. This is the connection. So you have Lyndon Johnson, who's the president, suspect in the assassination. Johnson Family Enterprises, the owner of the Winterland Ice Rink. Mary called to Garon, or Mary Boots Roberts White, which she's a CIA agent. She went to work for NASA. Anybody in the 60s connected to the Kennedy assassination who went to work for NASA, guess what? They didn't go work for NASA. NASA was a, a way to funnel money to the CIA, and it was used as an intelligence front. And you can Google that. There's a bunch of articles on how NASA was used as an intelligence front back then. And so she's uh, her brother's Joseph Caltagirone, Joseph Caltagirone Sr., his brother's with Vincent Caltagirone, Vincent Caltagirone Jr., divorced from Lorraine uh, Valenti Dinerstein, sister, uh, brother's uh, Jack Valenti. Jack Valenti's the right hand man of Lyndon Johnson. Do you see the loop here? No one has ever figured this out until now. And when I figured it out, I, I couldn't believe it. I just couldn't believe it. And I discovered it by chance. It was funny. Every time I take a break from the assassination, I study like sub assassination topics. So I took a break from the assassination to study Jack Valente. I've killed his file six, seven times. It's five, 600 pages long. The most important file you could ever read. Um, and uh, basically within like a day, I just happened to stumble across his sister having been uh, married to a cult of Garone and having children named cult of Garone. And I'm like, wait a minute. No, I was like, that can't be. So I went back and looked up Mary called to Garon again. I'm like, holy shit. They got the same kids. It, it, it's them. It's the same. It, it, it's them. And I was like, holy shit. Jack Valenti's sister married into the family of Mary Boots Roberts. I was blown away. Is it coincidence? Showed up there. Go off on a tangent a little bit. So now that we've seen that connection, we've seen, we haven't gotten to Jack Valenti yet, but we will. Very important guy in the history of probably top three people in the most important, you know, top three important people in the history of America. Like definitely. And when I get finished, you'll agree with me. So David Ferry goes on this trip, right? And he stops uh, allegedly and he goes on and stops at a bunch of hotels, stops at a bunch of hotels and the hotels um, give information to the FBI. You'll see that he left in a 61 light blue Comet station wagon. But in Galveston, um, at the hotel down there, it's said to be a blue Ford. Um, it's, it, it, there's just conflicting information all over the place. What I think happened was that I think there was a second vehicle involved. It was Sergio Cacha Smith, Emilio Santana, and they were taking Jerome Blackman back to his boat. He came in with the heroin. It got dropped off. He went to Dallas with them. They were on their way back to New Orleans, and they dropped him off at his boat in Galveston. That's what I think was going on there. Um, it says here that they didn't check out of the hotel in Houston, really, for two days. And um, basically, uh, they uh, they did a whole bunch. Of, they did some vehicle swaps, license plate swaps. They must have met up somewhere along the way, but it definitely was not faring. Um, so <coughs> there was a phone call made. David Ferry made a couple calls. He made calls to some radio stations. The, the, the official record says WDSH, but that's not correct. It, it, was, it was actually WDSU television, and he was calling to talk to a guy named Walter Sheridan, who was a guy who worked for CBS, who was also CIA. I haven't really put two and two together on why he was calling him. There's a lot of aspects of this trip I haven't been able to figure out. I figured out the meat and potatoes of it, but the fine details I'm still kind of working through. Um, Jack Ruby went to Galveston, definitely. Um, there was about a dozen people, R.D. Matthews, uh, William Morgan, a whole bunch of people hauled ass from Dallas uh, down to Galveston. 
and why they do that. So you really couldn't tell who was doing what. You know, it's got me stumped, so I had to have had the FBI stumped too. So um, he makes a call. This is unidentified until I identified it. Um, and it was unidentified, this number MO4-3581. And it came back to the Gateway Pool YMCA in um, Houston. Now, also, they stayed at the Allen Motel. They stayed at the Allen Motel, um, which actually backed up to the Gateway. And it wasn't called the YMCA then. It wasn't called the YMCA until later. Okay. So let's go ahead and look at Vincent Caltagarone's obituary. What did Vincent Caltagarone do with his life? Well, this guy, he was a board member of the National YMCA Scuba Program. Right. So this guy was in the Navy. He went to Navy intelligence and then he fucking sold insurance for 35 years. Give me a break. This guy was intelligence all the way. Um, he does pop up somewhere else in Memphis. I'm not even going to talk about that today. I was going to, but it's just too much information. But um, he pops up again somewhere in Memphis. What happened in Memphis? Um, all right. So if you look here and you see that he worked for the YMCA Scuba Association, uh, the national then you go back and you look at the phone number that was called. Where did it go? Um, he called YMCA. And why is that? That particular venue later became the downtown YMCA. And that is where Vincent Caltagiron taught scuba. So they were trying to get a hold of Vincent Caltagiron. Why would they drive, stay at the Allen Motel, try to get a hold of Jack Valenti's brother-in-law? That's why he was short tramp in Dealey Plaza. Absolutely. I have more evidence to back this up, but it's, I just don't want to go into it today. I got to hold something back for my book or my movie or whatever I'm going to do. But um, people have been trying to identify the short tramp forever. And I've been getting I've been, I'm pissed off over the years as people are like, oh, well, the short tramp looks like Raul. Raul, the guy who set up James Earl Ray in Memphis. Well, guess what? Now, I want to point something out here. These guys are intent, these tramps are intentionally obscuring their faces. Look at the old tramp. He's, scrunching, he's pushing his lower jaw out. He's kind of scrunching his eyebrows. His nose is kind of like, like puckered up. Like that is intentional obfuscation because they knew they were getting photographed. This is experience. These guys have done this before. These guys are lifelong agents. I'm pretty sure I know who the other two tramps are, but I'm not confident enough to tell you guys. But that's a, that's a doozy also. But um, yeah, so I'm pretty confident that Vincent Caltagiron, who is Jack Valenti's brother-in-law, is also Raul, and he was a short tramp. I'd be willing to bet a stack of money on it for sure. This isn't like a random guess. The phone numbers correspond the familial connection, they, they, they connect. Um, here's some more pictures. Look at every picture. He's screwing his face up, jaws out, jaws out. His, his, his nose, he's got the little dents on the side because he's scrunching his face. This is what he looks like when he's not doing that. I lined up the ears in Photoshop, they match. I'm pretty confident that that's him. I'm sorry. This is the, I, I skipped this one. This is uh, Joyce Roland. Joyce Roland is allegedly the mother of Roulant Roland. Um, I'm sorry, of Richard Roland and Roulon Roland was his father. So basically, Richard Roland posted this to this private group that I was in, posted it before I was in the group. And um, he basically talks about how uh, there was some problems with the Roberts. His mom took it over. He worked there, all this stuff. Um, ice capades. You see, I mentioned ice capades here. Ice capades was another trafficking front. They were using it to smuggle people. Uh, I got an article from a guy who worked at Humble Oil who actually um, 
<laughs> he tried out for ice capades with only six weeks experience and he got hired on as an ice skater. Give me a break. The guy was working for uh, humble oil and he was working for intelligence. That's why they picked him up because they can, who's going to stop the ice capades and think they're smuggling drugs. Nobody. So they, that's how they use them. Um, so from here you have Joyce Roland. You've already seen the picture of Mary boots Roberts and now look at them together. I'm pretty damn sure that Joyce Rowland and Mary Boots Roberts are the same person. 